Hello Math 8 students, this is Utah Middle School Math Project 4.1c, Solving Simultaneous Linear Equations by Graphing. This is the final lesson in this unit. For um, a quick review, we are going to practice getting standard form equations into slope-intercept form. Um, you don't always have to graph standard form equations by getting them into slope-intercept form, but I find that it's one of the best ways. So just a quick practice, let's go over a few of these together. We have 5x plus y is equal to 9, and so putting it into slope-intercept form means it's in y equals form. Really truly it means we'd have a y equals the slope times x plus the y-intercept. We're just solving for y. So when it says put it into slope-intercept form, understand that that means solve for y, and the first one is very easy. What's happening to y? We added 5x, so I'm going to start by subtracting 5x and balance it, do the same thing to the other side. That leaves me with y all by itself, and y is equal to 9 minus 5x. You absolutely can leave it this way, but typically when it's in true, true slope-intercept form, we like the slope and the x to be at the beginning and the y-intercept to be at the end, which is going to require rearranging some things. Would this be correct if I wrote 5x minus 9? Emma, thank you for the hand. Yeah, exactly. So if you're going to switch it around, you need to make sure you're paying attention to the signs. 9 is positive, and the 5x is negative. So you've got to pay attention to those signs if you're going to be rearranging that. So keep that in mind. Uh, let's practice a few more. Let's go to b, 4x plus 2y is equal to negative 12. We've got an extra step. We still start by getting rid of those x's, so I'm going to subtract the 4x. Oh, hold on. There we go. Subtract the 4x from each side. And notice what I'm going to do this time. Eyes on the screen. Yes, this still zeroes out. This is equal to 2i, but watch what I'm going to do. Remember how here we ended up having to rearrange it so that the 5x was at the beginning? Why don't we just write it that way? So instead of negative 12 minus 4x, what do I want to be at the beginning? The negative 4x. And what are we doing? Subtracting 12. Well, I'll save you a step later on if you just write it that way. Okay, and y is not yet by itself. We need to divide by 2 in order to get y by itself. And whatever I do to one side, we do to the other side, the whole side. But we have to do it in pieces. So dividing the whole side, but dividing it in pieces means I'm dividing the x's into two groups, and I'm dividing the 12 negative unit tiles into two groups. This divides out, leaving me with y equals and I have negative 4x divided by 2 simplifies to negative 2x. Minus 12 divided by 2 simplifies to minus 6. And now it is in slope-intercept form. Uh, for the sake of time, I'm probably not going to do these other ones, but students in class have had an opportunity to get those done. Any questions on any of those ones? All right, we're going to switch gears a little bit. Um, one way to look at systems of equations that we have not looked at before is we have a system here. What if I give you a coordinate? How can we find out if that coordinate is a solution? So here's what we're really asking. And I'm just sketching. I'm not sketching these lines in particular, right? I'm just going to say, here's a line. Here's a line. Even if it's not on a grid, can you still identify what that solution is? Where is it? Right there, right? And so when I'm saying, is this point a solution? We don't know if it's that particular point. Maybe I'm asking about this one. Would this point be a solution? No, it's not the intersection point. Would this point be a solution? It's on one line, right? But is it where the two lines are happening together? And so that's what we're really doing. We're saying whatever the coordinates of this random point are, we need to figure out if it's this magical point where they intersect. So. Quick discussion at your tables. How do you think we're going to do that without having to graph and find the solution? How can I figure out if 3, 8 is going to be the solution to the system? Quick discussion at your tables. Ready, set, go. Any thoughts or ideas? Sam? Yeah, you could plug them into your calculator, graph them, make it do all the work for you. But the answer to that is no. There's another way. I want to do it algebraically. How can we do it without having to graph it? Emery? Yeah, exactly. This is an x value and this is a y value. Let's see if this x value and this y value work. 
Okay. However, we want to be careful. We can't just plug it into the first one because if I plug it into the first one, let's say this green one, would that point work for the first equation if it lands here? Yeah, it's a th it's an x comma y that would work for this equation. Would that same x comma y work for this equation? No, so just testing it out in one isn't going to work. We have to test it out in both, and this is what that looks like. So here's my x comma y. That means I know that the x value is 3, and I know that the y value is 8, right? So when I'm looking at this equation, the 2x plus y is equal to 14, I'm testing out this specific x value of 3. So x, we're testing out the value of 3, and I'm testing out this y value of 8. Just substituting those values in. So 2 times x becomes 2 times 3, plus y becomes plus 8. And I want to know, is that going to be equal to 14? I'm asking that question. Okay, and does it work? Yeah, 2 times 3 is 6. 6 plus 8 is equal to 14. So yeah, it works. It works for that first one, which means that particular point, all we know so far is it could be any one of these points on the line. It's somewhere on this line and it works. We need to also decide, is it the magical point that's also on this other line too? Which means, oops, we have to test it out in the other equation as well. So testing it out in that other equation, we have x plus y is equal to 11. And again, we're testing out the x value of 3. So we're going to plug that in. The x value is 3. The y value of 8. And we're asking the question, is 3 plus 8 equal to 11? Yeah, it is. So is that point that magical point that works for both? Yeah, it is. Uh, let's see, 11 is equal to 11, it checks out. So we know that it happens to be on this line, it happens to be on this line, the way that it can be on both lines at the same time is for it to be the intersection point. So is 3 comma 8 a solution? Yes, but remind yourself how we did that. An x value of 3 and a y value of 8 works in both equations. Let's test it out for number three as well. I'll let you guys work a little bit ahead of me if you feel like you're ready to work ahead of me, but I still want to record this for students watching the video at home. Determine whether zero comma negative five is a solution. So once again, I'm giving you an x value of zero. I'm giving you a y value of negative five, and we're trying to figure out, is this going to work? Work with your groups to do this, and I will just silently work while the recording is going so that you can see it. But I want you guys to be talking and working with your groups as I do this. Okay, any questions? Okay, ready, set, go. All right, was the point 0, comma, negative 5 a solution? Did it work? No, 0 plus a negative 25 is negative 25. Is that equal to 25? No, it does not work. So even though it worked for 1, is it a solution to the system? No. Again, what that would be like is something like this, where I've got this system of equations, 
and I happened to find a point in x comma y that was on this first one. But it's not on the second one, so therefore it's not the intersection point. That's why it's true in the first one and not true in the second one. And now let's review something that we're already familiar with, with our experience with solving these in the last couple of days. What does it look like when I have one solution? What should I be drawing here or sketching here? Sam? Yep, two lines and they meet at one point. It doesn't matter where that point is, they're going to meet at just one single point. One single solution. What does it look like if it's no solution? What would I draw for no solution? Uh, Danielle? Yeah, parallel lines. So whatever I do for one, I need to do for the other. What do you notice is happening with these parallel lines? This is really a key concept that's going to help us with the rest of the lesson. What do you notice about these parallel lines? Uh, Kate and S. Yeah, they're not intersecting. They will never intersect. But what else do we notice about them, Gracie? Yeah, they have the same slope. That's what makes them parallel. The fact that they're never going to intersect happens because these are... Um, they have the same slope. Parallel lines, same slope. And infinitely many solutions, what is that going to look like? Luke? A line on top of another line. Again, that's very, very difficult to try and model here, unless I use those different colors. So maybe you can use different colors as well to show that it really, truly are two separate lines. something kind of like that. That shows that they are the exact same line, just one on top of the other. So it is a solution anywhere those lines exist. With that in mind, would this be a solution, this point that I just drew? No. So it's not any single thing works, but there are infinite possibilities within that line where they intersect. Okay. With that in mind, I want you to be able to look at these systems of equations and I want you to, to, to determine if they're going to have one solution, no solution, or infinitely many solutions without graphing them. We did that before, back when it was just one single variable. Now we've got two variables and two equations. Can you tell if they are going to be the exact same line? parallel lines or if they are going to intersect. Let's do the first one together. y is equal to 8x plus 2 and y is equal to negative 4x. Let's start with this. If it was no solution, what would you notice or what would be happening here? They'd have the same slope, right? Let's start there. Do these have the same slope? No, a slope of 8 and a slope of negative 4. So we know for sure they're not no solution. Infinite, oops, wrong way. Infinite solutions would be the exact same line. Are these the exact same line? No. So this is going to be one solution. Do you have to actually solve it? No. I just want to know, without having to do all that graphing stuff, can you figure out how many solutions there's going to be? That's all you have to do. And this is a one solution problem. Write yourself a little note. How do we know that? They have different slopes. Different slopes, they're obviously not the same line, so different slopes means that they will have an intersection. Part B, let's look at that one. This one is in slope-intercept form, right? This one, is it? It's close, but is it y equals? No. So let's not compare yet. Let's make sure that they're both in that same format first, okay? Let's start by getting this into y equals format, what we practiced on the first page. What's happening to y? We're adding 2 thirds x. Let's subtract 2 thirds x. Whatever I do to one side, we do it to the other side. Yeah, it was tricky. It's almost in slope intercept form, but not quite. And when I do this now, y is all by itself, and I have 1 minus 2 thirds x. You tell me. One solution, infinite solutions, or no solution. Talk with your groups real quick. See if you can come to a conclusion.
I heard one group have a good productive conversation. The rest were pretty quiet. That one group. Tell the class what you just discussed. Jaden. Yep. Yeah. Great observation. These both have the same slope. Slope for both lines is negative two-thirds. But they also have different y-intercepts. We're starting at different places. So since they are not the same line, since they're starting in different places, that means that these are going to be a no solution. Uh, for the sake of time, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. Let's take a look at E. What do you think about E? Talk with your groups real quick, just a quick 10 second conversation. Okay, and what do you think about C? This time maybe we don't have to get them into y-intercept or slope-intercept form, do we? Luke, what do you think? I did. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was writing in the wrong spot. You're right. Yes. They both have a 3x. They both have a plus 2y. And then... It's different. Here it's equal to 5, and here that same 3x plus 2y is equal to 6. So that means how could it be 3x plus 2y is 5 and 3x plus 2y is 6 at the same time? It can't. So that is going to be another no solution. So sometimes maybe you have to do a little bit of work to get them into the same format. Here they were in the same format, and that was enough to be able to come to some conclusions. Uh, last one. Let's try D. D is the last one that we'll do together, and then C and F can be homework. D, what do you think? Conversation at your tables. This one might take a little bit of extra time. With your groups, what do you think? Okay, what are your thoughts here? Still having some heated debates. For the sake of time, let's come back together and let's do this together. What are your thoughts on this one, Sam? Yeah, this one is an infinite solution. How did you come to that conclusion? So you're, you're trying to solve this one. To get into y-intercept form, slope-intercept form, okay? That is one way that can work. There's another way that we can do this with even less work. But you, that is absolutely right. That would work. Yes, Emery. Yeah, take a look at this. Notice the relationship between some of these numbers. If we divide everything here by a negative 2, look at what's happening. Negative 2x divided by negative 2 is going to leave me with x. Negative 2y divided by negative 2 is going to leave me with plus y. And negative 10 divided by negative 2 is equal to 5. And what do you notice now? They're exactly the same, right? So this is an infinite solution. And worst case scenario, what can you always do to figure out if it's infinite solution, no solution, or one solution? You graph it. This can just save you a little bit of time. Let's look at the next set of problems. Now you've got to create your own. Based on our exercises here, we kind of get the idea of what one solution, no solution, and infinite solutions look like. For example, when it's infinite solution, they're the same line. This one was just disguised. We did something else to it so that it wasn't so obvious that it was exactly the same line. When it's no solution, we saw it in slope-intercept form, where they have the same slope but different y-intercepts. When it's in standard form, we can also see they look the same until we get to the end and we say, wait a second, that can't work. One solution, different slopes. So here is an equation. 6x plus 4y is equal to negative 12. I want you to write a second equation that is going to make it be one solution. 
What is that going to look like? Remember when it's one solution, we need them to have different slopes. Do you know what the slope is here yet? No. So maybe let's do a little bit of work. Let's figure out what the slope of this line is going to be, which is, means we've got to solve for y in order to do that. We've got lots of experience with that. I'll help you. We'll do it together quickly. Subtract 6x, balance it, do the same thing to the other side. So I have 4y is equal to negative 6x minus 12. Divide each side by 4, even the right side in pieces, and I get y is equal to negative 6 divided by 4 is negative 3 halves x. Negative 12 divided by 4 is negative 3 or minus 3. So what is the slope? Oh wait, what's the slope? Thank you. Same hands, greasy. Negative 3 halves. And so if I want it to be a one solution system of equations, what would this need to look like? Anything but a slope of negative 3 halves. y equals 2x minus 9. That has a different slope than this one, so that would work. Come up with another one with your groups. Turn and tell your neighbor what is another one. Key thing is it needs to have a different slope. Hurry, tell your neighbors we're almost out of time. Okay, come back to me. For the next one, you need to write an equation that has no solution. What is that going to look like if it's no solution? Uh, yes, Fitz, give me an idea. Yeah, 6x plus 4y equals 12 instead of negative 12. Because notice, how can it be 6x plus 4y is negative 12 and 12 at the same time? What could it be instead of 12? What else could I write? Sam? So close. Notice what the slope is. It's negative. So you said 3 and a half x, but it would have to be negative 3 and a half x. But key thing, you're noticing, hey, wait a second, it has to be the same slope. So same slope, but a different y-intercept, right? So the no solution would be same slope. And I'm going to leave part C for your homework. Infinite solutions. Here's the last thing that I want to talk about in our last remaining seconds. Skip to the homework section really quick. I want you to discuss how many solutions does this have? Infinite, none, or one? One. Can you see what that solution is? No, it's off the grid. But you know, are these parallel lines? No. So are they going to cross eventually? Yes. And the last thing, I know you hear the rustling out in the hall, but quickly look at this one. This is beyond what we can do in eighth grade, but only if I asked you to do this algebraically, can you look at this system, which is a line and a parabola, the curved one is a parabola, can you find the, the uh, solution? Can you see where they intersect? then you can do the rest of it. Your homework is anything not finished in class. That's it for today's lesson. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.